quick section on logistic growth. So we've talked about exponential growth. And there is most often a problem with exponential growth. So if you're talking about exponential growth, then you have a graph that looks like this. Whatever it is that you're studying is growing forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, it's getting bigger. Now think about that in practicality. Think about a room or a, an island, okay? And this island has, say, six bunnies on it, okay? The island's not very big, maybe a, you know, a few square miles or so. And these bunnies are going to, obviously, going to start having more bunnies, right? Okay, and don't you love my example? Um, so, as the bunnies start having more bunnies, it's going to start growing exponentially. Now, there's a little bit of a problem, though. Will, it, will these bunnies keep populating this island and growing in number forever and ever and ever? No. They won't. Because the, pop, the island is only so big. It can only support so many bunnies. So as they start having more bunnies, some are going to die off. Some, they're going, their um, rate of which they have bunnies is going to die down some. It's going to level off. So what happens is instead of going straight up, it's going up exponentially for a little bit. And then it levels off. And that is what logistics growth is. This is not logarithmic growth. Logarithmic look like this. So this is two different things because logistic does, like some people, um, some mathematicians call it an S-curve. So logistic is starting out exponential, but then realizing that things are leveling off. The logistic growth model looks like this. C over 1 plus A times E to the negative BT. C is your carrying capacity. So if you've got your logistic growth here, the carrying capacity is the horizontal line where this purple function gets closer and closer to the carrying capacity, but never hits it, okay? So let's say that the island will support at most 5,000 bunnies. So you're going to get very, very close to 5,000 bunnies, but never quite hit it. Then A, B, and C are constants depending on the problem. So let's look at our example. We're given a logistic growth model. F of T is equal to 750 over 1 plus 74 times E to the negative 0.526T. And notice we've already given, been given A, B, and C, so that's good. But we want to identify what these things are in here. So Part A says, state the carrying capacity and the growth rate. Okay. The carrying capacity is C, the number on top. And in order to put that in... To context, that would be 750 grams of yeast. And then, what is the growth rate? The growth rate is B. go back here and write this down if you want to add that to your notes there the growth rate is b just like it was k where we did e to the kt it's it's e to the 
negative BT, B is still your growth rate, just like K was your growth rate. And it would be the absolute value of B. So the absolute value of B is 0.526. Now, what does 0.526 mean? That is the rate. And rates are usually measured in percents. So this means 52.6% growth per hour. Determine the initial population. So the initial population would be when our function is at time zero. So we just plug in zero for t. Now, point, negative point five two six times zero is zero. And e to the zero is one. And one times 74 is just 74. So what we end up with seven is with 750 divided by 75, or 10 grams of yeast. Couple more parts to this. Part D asks, or C asks, what is the population after five hours? So we plug in five for T. Put that in your calculator, you'll get 118 grams of yeast. Next it asks, how long does it take for the population to reach 250? So this time, we're saying how long does it take? We're solving for t. So we're plugging in for f of t, the amount it gets after amount of time t. Okay? So the first step would be to get rid of this fraction. I'm going to do that by multiplying both sides by what's on the bottom here. 1 plus 74 times e to the negative 0.526t. Now we can divide both sides by 250. we've got something we can work with here. I have to move this over because I didn't give myself enough space. Okay, so subtract one from both sides. Divide both sides by 74. Two divided by 74, if simplified, is one over 37. Then natural log both sides to get rid of the E. So we have negative 0.526T.
equals the natural log of 1 over 37. So T is the natural log of 1 over 37 divided by negative 0.526, approximately 6.86 hours. And then the last part asks, use a graphing utility to determine how long it takes for the population to reach one half of the carrying capacity. So depending on whether you're using a graphing calculator or Desmos, you would first start by graphing y sub 1 is equal to 750 divided by, and then put this in parentheses, 1 plus 74 times e to the, and then let's put this in parentheses too, negative 0 0.526t. And that'll be x sub 1. And we're trying to see when will the population reach one half of the carrying capacity. So in y sub 2, we want half of the carrying capacity. That's half of 750. So the second function we're going to graph is y equals 375. So when we graph these two, you can see that where they cross, their intersection is at where y is 375 and where x is 8.1826333. That tells us how long it takes the population to reach half the carrying capacity is approximately 1.18 hours. And that concludes this section on logistic growth.